So, ladies and gentlemen, leg ulceration may not be sexy, but undoubtedly accounts for expenditure of 2% of all healthcare budgets. The usual patient journey is that the patient presents with a leg ulcer, may be seen either in primary care or in a wound healthcare centre, and often they do not get referred on to a vascular specialist for evaluation to see if their veins can be treated. And one of the mainstays of treatment is just to use compression hosiery. Many questions have been asked as to whether intervention on the superficial veins will actually improve leg ulcer healing. So this study aimed at looking at early intervention on the incompetent veins to see if it would improve leg ulcer healing compared to compression alone. <coughs> this is very much the simple study design. Patients were randomized to compression plus early intervention within two weeks or compression and deferred ablation, i.e. ablation to when the, after the leg ulcer had healed, which often in the UK was regarded as standard practice. And you can see quite clearly that looking at for a 90% confidence, you can see that we needed 450 patients with respect to the sample size and just over 254 events of leg ulcer healing. So here you can see the Kaplan-Meier curve, the standard Kaplan-Meier curve, and in green you will see the early group, and in orange you will see the deferred group. And you will see here quite clearly that there is a difference which is signi markedly significant between the two groups. And if you look at the adjusted ha hazard ratio, looking at the multivariate analysis, you can see that there is quite clearly that this is significantly different. Now, in the UK and certainly in the US, if you look at things with respect to MedCast that are coming out, it is actually quite important to look at whether a treatment modality is cost effective. Now, when you're doing cost effectiveness analysis, you look at the whole cohort of costs, but obviously there are some data that will be missing, and you can either use a system of multiple imputation or you can look at a complete completed cases, of which there were 375, and you can see that this allows you to calculate what the probability of the early intervention using a nice threshold would be, and here it is quite clear that this methodology has shown quite clearly that a pathway of early intervention is undoubtedly cost-effective, and if you look at data from NICE, NICE would usually say anything that is over a 70% prob probability is undoubtedly what they would recommend. So, ladies and gentlemen, we've obviously kept this very brief, but I would really like to emphasize to you this is the first large randomized trial that has shown that early intervention on superficial venous incompetence results in accelerated healing of leg ulcers. And not only does it, does it do that, it also gives the patients a longer ulcer-free time. And by all thresholds, and even if you were to look at American thresholds, it is undoubtedly cost-effective. So what are the implications for practice? And they, these are global implications because a lot of recommendations around the world sit at the moment as 2C recommendations. But the key three take-home messages and implications are that anybody who presents with a leg ulcer should have a rapid assessment. And if superficial vein incompetence is identified, they should be, have that incompetent vein treated. We will undoubtedly need to see a rewrite of many of the international global guidelines. But one of the key things is to empower the nurses and the patients who have leg ulcers to actually seek referral to a vascular specialist to have their veins treated, and also to persuade those people, be they insurers globally, commissioners in the UK who monitor and dispense healthcare budget, that this is a very cost-effective way to treat patients and that these patients will significantly benefit. The guidelines indicated that in the US they were intervening with more weak recommendations. What, what, what will we see happen in the, in the UK? Well, the hope would be that we will see patients, rather than languishing in the community, being referred for very early evaluation and early intervention. Because if you look at some of this data, you will see that we were unable to randomize over a third of the patients because they had had their leg ulcer present for six 
more than six months, and that didn't meet one of the inclusion criteria. And there are a lot of people out there who have chronic leg ulcers that never actually get assessed for intervention. I'm not saying we will be able to treat everybody, but there are lots of patients out there who are not getting optimal treatment. And if we go back to the situation in the US, there are a lot of patients who actually stall at the wound care center level, do not go on and have their vascular evaluation, even though that is the recommendation of the AVF and the SVS guidelines, because there is this concept that just by bandaging them, you can carry on eventually getting them to heal but there are lots of issues as to why that may be a benefit to keep somebody in the wound health care centre. So in the UK, certainly, you don't just need the protocols changed. You need that, that understanding between community care and specialist care so the referral pathways work again to get them, those patients that can benefit in to be treated. Yes. That's really fantastic. Brilliant. For a landmark trial again at this year's Charing Cross.